Today we're going to be taking a look at the new LEGO Star Wars 2023 TIE Bomber. This set released on January 1st, and I'm not going to lie, it took me a while to actually get my hands on this set, as it was sold out on LEGO.com the first day, and none of the stores in my area had it either. Anyways, this set number is 75347, it has 625 pieces, and it retails for $65, which in my opinion is a great deal for the number of pieces and the minifigure selection. It comes with four exclusive minifigures, as you can see here, being Vice Admiral Sloan, Darth Vader, a TIE Pilot, and a Gonk Droid. And up here in the top, corner it also has an emblem for the 40th anniversary of return of the jedi which is kind of odd because on the box art this is clearly an asteroid from the empire strikes back moving on to the back of the box there's really not a whole lot to see here it's mainly just displaying the features of the set and the minifigures one thing i really do not like about this box though is that it has thumb tabs on it a 65 dollars set having thumb tabs when i saw this i was just disappointed because i knew that right when i was going to try to open it that the back of the box was just going to crease and that's exactly what happened and it really got on my nerves. The only reason I can come up with on why LEGO is starting to put thumb tabs on their bigger sets now is maybe just to keep little kids from using like knives or scissors to cut the tape. But other than that idea, I honestly have no idea why they're doing this. Here we have the instruction manual and I'm not gonna lie, I'm really not liking the new 2022-2023 instruction manuals at all. I think it's so bland. I think it's so lazy looking. There's no art on it at all and the render is not even fully complete. I think the older instruction manuals will I mean, they're not even that much older. It's just been a few years. I think they look a lot better because they had the full box art on them. They're actually fun to look at and there's color in them. But instead, we just get this boring gray instruction manual. I mean, it's not the biggest thing in the world. Anyways, moving on to the figures. First off, we have the TIE Pilot. This figure is exclusive to this set, but the changes are so minor that it's not even very easy to tell. So at a glance, it's not really much different than any TIE Pilot we've gotten in the last decade or so. And under the helmet, he just has a normal flesh-toned kind of angry face. Here he is compared to the TIE pilot we got back in 2018 from the TIE fighter from Solo. And as you can tell, really the main difference is in the helmet with the 2018 version having stripes down the side and the 2023 version not having that. The 2023 version also has a bit of a better back print with more details on it. But if you just take a quick glance at both of these figures, you really can't tell the difference between them. Next up, we have Darth Vader. I'm actually really happy with this figure, especially with the arm printing. I think the arm printing looks really good, although I kind of have mixed opinions on Lego using arm printing in cheaper sets. I really liked how it was mainly exclusive to just UCS sets. It made it more kind of rare, I guess. But now I like how it's like more readily available. So I don't really know. I have mixed opinions on Lego putting arm printing in cheaper sets. But regardless of that, this is still a great figure. And as for his back print, there's not really much to see. There's just some minor details under his cape. But as for his head print, there's not much to see. It's just the typical, you know, messed up Darth Vader head that you'd probably expect. Next up, we have Ray Sloan or Admiral Sloan. And it's not really a whole lot to say about her. If you don't know who this character is, she first appeared in the novel A New Dawn. And from there, she just appeared in a few video games and a few books and a few comics. But I mean, there's really not a whole lot to say about this figure. It is kind of surprising that they included her in this set because she hasn't been seen in any type of movies or shows. But I mean, Disney is really trying to push this character. I do wish that she came in her white Admiral outfit instead of just a normal gray one. I feel like that would have made this figure look a lot more unique and a lot cleaner. And last but certainly not least, we have a Gonk Droid. It's not really a whole lot to say about him. I do like how he is printed, but most Gonk Droids are printed anyways. Although one thing that is kind of weird and frustrating is the feet design as you can only put them on studs if the front parts are sticking over the edge of a brick or something as you can see here because there's only studs on the back and the front is just those little handle pieces so as you can see you can't really completely place him on studs here we have the actual build itself and i'm not gonna lie i was kind of hating on it when i first saw the original pictures for it but now that i have it in hand it's actually definitely surpassed my expectations. The model looks really good actually. It's very accurate and it's pretty sleek looking, although I do have to say it is a little too small for a TIE Bomber, especially when you compare it to the 2018 TIE Fighter, which I will do later on in the video. It's just a little bit undersized and that's pretty disappointing to me. But anyways, here is the back of the set. As you can see, the wings can move freely and you have the engines that do look really good in my opinion. But back to the front, you do have the cockpit, which is a printed piece and you have, I guess you could call it like the bomb hold or something but that is a printed piece too and I think that looks really good. It's pleasing to see that LEGO is not including that many stickers in this set. To put your TIE Pilot in the actual TIE Bomber, you just lift up the cockpit and slide him in there. There are no studs in here, he just slides in, which is kind of a little bit weird to me. I don't really like that. And back to the thought of this being undersized, you can see that it is really crammed in there. But if you compare it to the older TIE Fighters, they basically have like a whole little room for him to fit inside of. But for this one, he just barely fits in there and that's one reason I think this is pretty undersized. Although they were pretty limited because they 
they weren't just building a sphere like the normal TIE fighters, they actually had to build like a cylinder as you can see here. So I'm sure that kind of played into why this set is a little bit smaller, but plenty of people have made mocks that have been bigger than this and it seems like they didn't have a problem with it. Now moving on to how the actual bombs are dropped, now this is probably the most disappointing and worst thing about this set. Literally on the top there are just flick fire missiles that you push in I guess and they fall out and it's really hard to do that as you can see and it's just really freaking lame. This would have been so much better if LEGO actually made some type of mechanism to drop the bombs out of but instead we just get crappy flick fire missiles that don't even work. As you can see there is this piece here on the bottom which in universe is actually the bomb chute that the bombs drop out of. But with the LEGO set it's just there for looks pretty much and I guess you could maybe use it as like a stand or a landing gear but other than that there's really no use for this at all. This set also includes this little cart build which is mainly just to store the extra bombs on. Other than that, there's really nothing to see here. I mean, you can grab Ray Sloan and put her on there, or maybe the TIE Fighter Pilot, or whatever you want to put on there. But other than that, there's really nothing to see. It's just a nice little play feature. Here it is compared to the 2018 TIE Fighter, and as you can see, the TIE Fighter absolutely dwarfs it. And obviously, it's because TIE Fighters are taller, but if you compare the cockpits, the TIE Fighter cockpit is much bigger than the TIE Bomber's cockpit. And this is what I was saying earlier, the diameter of the TIE Bomber cockpit technically should be the same diameter of the TIE Fighter cockpit, but instead, they just made it really small, and I honestly honestly don't know why besides the thoughts that I said earlier. Here's a top-down view of it. I know it looks a little bit funky, but as you can see, the window for the TIE Fighter is much bigger than the window for the TIE Bomber. If the TIE Bomber was the right size, these two windows would actually be exactly the same, but instead we just get this tiny windshield piece for the TIE Bomber, which you can't even see through because there's bricks behind it. Now, my final thoughts on this set is that it is really good looking and the minifigure selection is very nice, although I still think the size is just too small and also the bomb dropping mechanism is just just, it's just flat out awful. The bomb dropping mechanism is flat out awful. I think LEGO should have made this set bigger. That would have obviously raised the price because that would have raised the piece count. I think it possibly could have been about a 70 or even $80 set and people would have been willing to buy that and it could have been a lot more accurate and the bomb dropping mechanism could be a lot better and they actually probably could have used the actual shoot for the bombs to come out of but instead it is a little bit dumbed down and there's just flick fire missiles and it's pretty small but if you exclude those things the design of the set is absolutely amazing especially the details on the engines and the wings and i'm really happy that there are no stickers in this set whatsoever because usually there are a lot of stickers on tie fighters and it's just it's really relieving just not to use stickers when you're building and like i said the minifigure selection is just great i think the best minifigure is probably darth vader with the printed arms it's just really nice to get a printed arm figure in a cheaper set although it still kind of messes with me a little bit because i liked how they were used to be exclusive to just ucs sets but other than that this set is a pretty great start to 2023 along with the battle pack and i really really hope that the summer sets are going to be as good as the rumors are saying.